Welcome back. In this episode, we're going to have a look at how we can get around the 3D world through our 2D window, how we can move objects around and how we can split the viewport up into multiple parts so that we can look at multiple angles of our 3D world at the same time. Let's take a look at this. This is my new layout that I've just made in the previous episode, and I'm kind of instinctively moving the viewport around like this, but I will show you how to do it and the multiple options that we have to make this happen. I'm going to go and make my scene tab visible here. There's just one option in here right now, the filament draw options node. We'll talk about that later. I'm looking at my viewport in filament by the way, which is why that node is so important. But there's really nothing in my viewport right now. It's just a gray grid here. So that we have a couple of objects to play with. I'm going to go and bring a couple in from the primitives menu. So create new primitive and I'm going to make myself or maybe a sphere. That's good. I'll leave the defaults in place. And I'm going to go and move this over here. And this is just so that we have something, you know, that we can demonstrate things with. I'll move that over here. I'll go and create myself a second object just so that, you know, we've got something else. Perhaps maybe my friend, the cube. He also has default values. There it is. That's the cube. I'll leave him on the center of our world here. And because I'm more like a colorful person. I'd like to give these guys a few colors here. That happens on the surfaces tab. We're going to talk more about this. I'm just going to quickly do this so that we have something that looks handsome. I could have prepared this, but then you don't know how I've made it. And I'm, I'm always a big fan of, you know, if you want to look over my shoulder, then uh, then please do. No secrets here. There we go. Now we have a blue cube and a green sphere. So one important thing that we need to keep in mind is that we're dealing with a 3D world and I can kind of see that my objects are 3D, but we're not using any kind of 3D technology to look at that 3D world, unless you're using VR goggles, which I don't think they're supported in that studio, but we're looking at this on a two-dimensional monitor. So we're looking at the 3D world through a two-dimensional window, so to speak. And that's kind of part of the problem of getting around in 3D because we're only seeing one very limited perspective. And if I go and adjust my viewport to something like this, we see that there is some trickery involved that shows me what's closer to me and what's further away. See if I take my sphere now and use this little tool here, the little translate on the Z option, I can move it all the way further to the back. And of course, it being smaller, it kind of tells me, well, that's obviously far away. The cube's larger, that must be further forward. And it's also indicated by the grid here. If I look at these evenly spaced, quite obvious squares here, the moment I turn my viewport around like this, I can see that this line is, no, is longer than, say, this line. And by things being drawn smaller, in the background, it's an indication of things being further away. It's a technique known as foreshortening. And painters have used this for many hundreds of years, like all the classic painters who first started drawing with perspective in mind. This is the technique they've used, foreshortening. And our perspective view also employs that to show us what's where. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a moment. Just for now, let's have a look at how we actually get around the viewport in the most efficient way. So let me go and select my cube here and show you the viewport options that we have right here at the top right. So there's these tools here, they will let us do that. There's also this little cube here that will also let us do that. And we also have keyboard shortcuts that will help us with that. This here is the Orbit tool. Left click and drag on it and you will see that whatever is currently in the center of the viewport, you will orbit around it. So as if you had a camera at a constant space away from it and you can go and just orbit around anything that's in the center of your viewport. Just below it, we have the pan tool. Works very similar. Left click, hold, hold it clicked, and then move your mouse around. So left click and drag to move. I believe the kids call it strafing in video games. So we don't orbit at all. We just move left and right. Then underneath it here, we have our dolly tool. It's not actually called the zoom tool, even though when we left click and drag on it and then go and move the mouse to the left or to the right, it appears that we're zooming in. That's not quite the case. Zooming is something else. This is in fact changing the distance between us 
being the cameraman. So they are basically our camera and the object. So we're, we're changing that space between the object and the camera. Zooming is something else. Zooming means we remain at a constant space between the object and the camera, and we're changing the focal length of our camera. And that changes the foreshortening of what we're showing on the picture or in the viewport. So we'll talk about that in a little while. There's also this little square icon here, and that will frame up whatever I have currently selected. And if I go and do that, it'll go and snap right to the cube. And it's kind of nice if I had moved my camera a little bit further to the to the left here, to the right here, sorry, and I'm trying to orbit around something. It's, it looks like I'm not quite orbiting around the object that is selected because I'm orbiting around the center of what is currently framed up on the viewport, which is nothing, but that's a great deal of frustration for newcomers. When you think, hey, I'd really like to go, I can see these parts of the cube, but I'd like to see behind it now. How do I, that's ah, kind of difficult here, what's going on? That is where this little framing up icon really comes in handy. You either click that or you can use a menu shortcut, which is Control F. So let me do that again. Control F. F will do the same thing as this. It's a very handy shortcut that I recommend everyone remember. And it works with any object. So if I go and select my sphere at the back here now, Control F will snap that right into the center of the viewport, which is kind of nice. And we go back to my cube. There it is. That's kind of nice to traverse large distances. You can also select multiple things. So if I select the sphere and the cube together, I can do that in the scene tab with the shift key and then hit this icon or control F, then both of them will be framed up at the same time. So that's nice if you had two things that you need to see at the same time in the viewport, just select multiple, then hit control F or the little framing up icon here, and then that will make that happen. I've used something else kind of instinctively here. If I go back to my cube, you can also dolly, not just with this, you can also dolly just by rolling your, scrolling your mouse wheel. That'll do the same thing. Those are kind of the left click and most important options, but there's also right click options on any of these icons available. Like we talked about dollying versus zooming. If I go and left click and then move my mouse left or right, then I'm dollying. But if I'm right clicking and then moving left and right, then I'm actually zooming. So this is the, the difference. And you can see that the perspective totally changes. This distorts my cube quite heavily. If I go and bring it back, you can just about see that it goes and isn't, there's not a cube anymore. It's like a monster cube. What's going on here? That's happening with right click and drag. That'll change your perspective and it'll leave the distance between you and the camera intact. Then there's also banking the camera. So this is going to be more important when we talk about cameras. So we talked about the orbit being left click and drag, but if you right click and drag, you actually look around. So that's also quite helpful if you wanted to just leave the camera on the tripod and just turn it around left and right. If you don't want to orbit around, you do this. Also quite nice. And then a related feature is in fact banking. That's how you make Dutch angles. So if I go and frame up my cube again, like so, if I hold down the control key and then right click and drag left and right on my mouse, I can do this. And that's kind of cool. These are, this is kind of something called Dutch angles, and it adds a bit of dramatic perspective to your pictures and especially to your portrait. So rather than framing up something straight, you always give it this kind of slight Dutch angle and that makes things look very dramatic and very interesting. And you can always follow the cube here to see where the horizon actually is, if the horizon line isn't exactly super stable, or if you're not entirely sure, is this straight or is this straight? I can't really tell. You just usually go by what the picture, how the picture feels good. But if you can, if you don't have those horizon lines, you can always have a, keep an eye on the little cube here. Speaking of the cube, it also lets you orbit around. So left click and drag on the cube. It'll also do the same thing that you can do with this icon here. You can also look straight ahead at an object. If you go and pick a side, let's say the front, and you just uh, click this side here, this, this orange square. If you do that, then the viewport automatically kind of moves there. Let me do it again from the top here. Click and it does this. So it kind of goes in, into that position. Kind of nice. All these little tricks. 
but if you've screwed something up which you know does happen so you maybe you've got you've done you've gone done something like this and you think hey and um, that really isn't that just that just looks super unhealthy now i really don't know how i can bring this back because i think jay hello something's totally screwed up there's this arrow icon at the bottom and that's kind of a big viewport reset button that's something cool so we can't really break anything if you click that then everything will be reset back to the defaults so no matter if you've changed the focal length of your viewport camera or if you've overdone it with the dutch angles or whatnot this thing will always reset it which is a really nice handy feature to have let's leave it here for the viewport transforms bring in a couple of primitives and see if you can follow my logic around and just see if you can navigate the viewport this has got to become second nature for you as you bring in content that we bought from the das marketplace and we'll see in the next episode how we can line it up with the tools and what other secrets our viewport has to offer join me for that